using the top ortho view. So here we zoom in on our apartment building and let me save. And we go to a, the grease pencil tab and we say we're going to do a polygon and it turns into a paintbrush and we want to do continuous drawing and go to polygon again and I go click 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 I'm going to ignore some of those features there click 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 and just get the basic outline of it and draw it there. So I've made a basic outline of my building. I can also do the other building that, oh no I can't do that. Control Z to get out of that. Um, only endpoints. That would have to be a separate, a separate object. Okay, unless I, maybe if I take out continuous drawing, take that out and try it again. Do poly. Okay, there we go and do the other building, 110 Draper Lane. So we get the basic outline of the building. All right, and once we've done that and we click off of it, now what we do is we do convert to geometry and make it into a path. So there is a path, but we have to turn off we have to turn off something drawing brushes huh because it made a funky thing there. Current grease not valid. Can we go look at all right? Because there's a there's a bad um, a bad uh, connection there. But if you go then to erase and you erase the grease pencil, you can see that under it is a path. So we have that, but we've got to get rid of this line here. So to do that we go to tab to edit and we can um, we can select hit the G key kind of grabs that out and that I've got to get rid of this. So we're going to deal with that once we've converted this to a, um, a polygon. So let me go out of edit mode, back into object mode, and then with this object highlighted, because this object has now some dimension to it as an object, then I'm going to go to object and convert to mesh from curve and that should have made an object out of it. And then I can then hit edit and there's all these points and I'm going to get rid of a bunch of them because I don't really want them. In fact, I'm going to get rid of an entire segment here by clicking on the line. There's, a, there's, there's points, edge select and face select. So I'm going to get rid of these lines by clicking on them. And maybe I can do select linked. Now that does the whole thing, so we don't want that. Let me do select edge loops. That, again, that does the whole thing, so I'm going to have to do each one individually. For those links, and then hit X and get rid of those edges. Or go back to points. So, oh, there's something underneath here. That's another interesting thing. 
Let me move this over. I don't know why we have two things there. Blender's funny that way. So I will now use my C. I guess I can't select these. Who knows what those are? Oh, because I'm in edit mode, that's why. So if I go back to object mode, I can select between the objects. I'm going to delete this entire object, grab this object, bring it back over, and this is the object that I'm going to work with in edit mode. And then in edit mode, I will take spurious things like this edge and get rid of that, and this edge and get rid of that, and get rid of this, and shift, hold on to that, and get rid of this edge and get rid of this edge. And then I want to, <clears throat> to go to points and grab this point and I should turn on snapping right there. So snapping is on and then I will move this with G if it lets me. There we go. It's not letting me move it. I guess I should turn it off then. There we go. I'll just move it to there. Okay. And I will select all the points. And now I will go to Tools and remove doubles because there's a lot of doubles in there. And I'm going to say how much, how many of the doubles to move by working with the strength thing. So you can see if I really play with it, it does crazy things to the shape as it removes double points. So use remove doubles only in so far as it retains most of the shape that you want. And then hit enter. And Let's see what happens when we go to object mode and then back into edit mode. Yeah, so that's what we have there. And go back to, um, let's turn this into a view like this. And now let's extrude this to make it the proper height. Although, wow, look at those points there. You're going to find some extraneous points that you'll probably want to remove. I'm going to use the B. Let me go off of that. Cleanup, data cleanup is important in there. That's some, from some other object, I guess. So that's not in ours. That's in a different object. That object there, which is not showing up even. So I'm not really sure what those points are from because they don't show up. Some artifact. Okay, no problem. Let me move this down. Another thing you should try to do is when you see that the origin point is way off from your object, then go to Object Transform Origin to Geometry and it puts it right in the middle of it. And I'm going to look at this from the side on near some of the buildings. I don't know where we are on the hill yet. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to hit tab to go into edit. Select everything there. We need to make a face for this if we want it to be a solid object. So I hit F and it creates a face. And then I'm going to go into the face mode and I'm going to hit E for extrude and move it up like so make a certain height of the building. Okay, And then I'm going to hit tab to get out of it and I have a solid building there. Now where that actually fits in the hill is going to be provided by the contour data but at least now I have my apartment building more or less in the landscape over it. Okay, so we have that and our next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go up here and turn on our DEM again. And we're going to try and, oh, another thing I want to do 
just for in case things get distorted. Let's turn off this. Let's grab all of our buildings and let's duplicate them. All right, we have them duplicated and then hit M and move them to a layer for safety. And I'll go back to, oops, I didn't do that right. Go back, move it to another layer for safety. Okay. And now it's in its own layer and we can deselect that. Now we have this layer which has our satellite image upon which everything lines up and has our DEM. Now we have to try to get the texture map, that is the satellite image, onto the DEM. And you do that by selecting the DEM. Let's deselect everything and select just the DEM. And <clears throat> we are going to unwrap it onto the image. Now we have to sort of look and see where our image is in relation to that if we want to use the entire contour. Maybe we don't. But um, we should make some kind of marker on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift up the image like so. And then I'm going to the DEM I'm going to go into edit mode, select it all, look at the mesh, and I'm going to cut out the parts of the mesh that I don't need. So I deselect, I use the bounding box, and I go and get rid of all this data, except it doesn't work. All right, so the reason that it didn't work is because I haven't applied my modifier. You see the modifier is what gives it all that slope where the river is over here. And I have to add it and apply it before I can do anything with it. So I hit apply and then apply down in this order, starting with that and then doing the other DEM texture that I showed. This is what would go ooh, like that. This shows the river. This information, the depth information, is the strength, which is 1 uh, as it came in. I'm going to apply that to it, and now that mesh is fixed, sort of like baked in. With that baked in, I can now select only the DEM and deselect it again. Go into edit mode, hit B and get rid of, using X, those edges. Although maybe we should have done it from, let's see. Let's go in and keep a little bit of overlap. So B, let's keep that face there. And get rid of all those faces. All right, I would want to get rid of that too. Same thing here at the top. Delete faces and this here. We don't need all that part of the river. Get rid of that and get rid of that. Okay. Maybe that top part as well. All right, and there's some overlap there. Okay, so with that, and I think this could also interfere, come to think of it. We really don't need that either. All right. So with that, we now need to go and put this mark, um, 
we need to come in there and our export Google map which is this one here let's move it down and all the buildings seem to be still in the right place so we're gonna select the DEM only which is that is selected in fact I'll turn this map off so that we don't make a mistake and now I'm gonna to go to UV editing go to 7 and 5 for top ortho there it is I'm going to go to edit mode by hitting tab I'm gonna select everything and that is the section that we're working with over our digital elevation I'm going to tell it that I want to use the image which was the export Google set I believe that's the one we can try this one here and see if that section is what we were taking. No, it's actually not. Let's see if it's... That's not good. So what we want to do is do an unwrap projection and project from view bounds, but that gives us the entire valley. So that's not right. If we do an unwrap to that, that's the wrong projection. Although we can move it by selecting this and moving it over. It sits somewhere in here. So now go to the image. No. Maybe we scale this in scale this in the scale it in the X direction. And move it. Scale in X. I guess we can see what that does when we go to here. The question is do the buildings still line up? So it, what it has done is it has put the map on there. Let me go out of Z. Go out of edit mode. And look at it top down it's slightly altered as you can see things are off this building is off that way and so we can move it around to try to get it back in alignment. It's not horrible. It's actually not too bad. It's a little bit off in certain places and that has to do also with the scale. So if I um, scale it and G shift it that's looking a little better. So sometimes things get a little off when you do that. This is still off over here. Maybe it needs to be scaled a bit in X. That was the problem. And then drop down with G. So you're going to have to mess with the scaling a bit. Like that. Up here is OK but over here it's a bit distorted. Scale it in Y. 
but we should be when we're doing it in top ortho and then scale in y or scale in z. There's no scale in z. Scale in x. X clearly doesn't work. It's the distortion there, scale in y. That is a weird way to scale, because it's supposed to be ortho. Well, you can actually move the houses individually at this point if they are not matching. That is something that you can do, uh, as I say, individually. Let's see what happened to my apartment building. My apartment building didn't show up at all. There it is, they're underground. So I take my apartment building and lift it up onto the ground. That's not too bad. Maybe it needs to be rotated slightly because the land does slope down by our apartments. And then there's the river. But overall, we're getting somewhere with this. Uh, this side, by the way, I want to do view and show active. And that layer, I'm going to rename. And that is Draper Lane. Apartments. OK. What is that one? Greensboro Hebrew Center. Oh, that's where they put the solar panels. OK, so we should put the solar panels on the Hebrew Center because they're already there. So what I'm going to do with the Hebrew Center, where the solar panels actually exist in real, then let me show you that. Because this is all real life stuff. So if I put Greenberg Hebrew Center Solar, and you can see that if I go to images, there's the Greenberg Hebrew Center solar panels. And if I go to all, we have Greenberg Hebrew Center view the solar panels at work. Hmm. Oh, you need a flash player. OK, so we don't have the flash player. OK, here we go. So this is the Hebrew Center solar panels at work. And if I go back to here, I wonder if anything will happen. You can see pictures of them. No, they don't have a picture on their site. But here, dedication of rooftop solar panels at Greenberg Hebrew Center. Funny, there's no pictures. So we can see that the Greenberg, solar, uh, the Greenberg Hebrew Center does have solar panels on its roof. And you can even go to uh, to see how much they're putting out in the week, how much they're putting out today, and learn how solar works. So this is a part of town where there are solar panels. It looks like I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So they have five in one row and six in another, and then one two, three, four, five, three, four, five. So they have ten, two rows of five and one row of six. And let's see if there's other pictures that might show so we can get that configuration done. Here it is again there. They have a row of four. Oh, they got a whole rooftop there. Okay, so they've got a lot of solar panels. There's just the ones down there and then there's the ones um, Yeah. So what we're looking at in the Facebook group is not all of the panels, because there's a whole bunch of them there. I wonder if they actually show any pictures that we could use for this, but apparently not. OK. Well, that means we should just start covering it with panels. We don't have to make it exact. And the way that we do that is we go to the Greenberg um, Hebrew Center, which is appropriately now situated on the hill of this great map. Let's save this. And um, give it a color. 
Let's give it a brick color. So I go here to materials and I add modifier and I'll give it a, a sort of brickish color. There it is. You can see the Hebrew center there. I'll do the same thing for my apartment building. I'll give that a brickish color. And here I can select that material. So it's the same brickish color. You can also give that a name, which would be there, and we'll call that uh, brick. And then it shows up in both this one and that one. So we have the brick color. And we take this and we're going to download some solar panels by going to by going to 3D warehouse. And from there, we can type in solar panels and find an array that looks, this one has a bunch of stands on it, which we don't need. This one, we can just take panels themselves. That's probably the best thing for now. There's a lot of models available. This one looks most like it, and it's a quick one. So we click on that, and then we go to download, and download it as a Colada file. And that should um, appear somewhere. There it is, solar panel zip. So I'll show in folder, and I'll take that solar panel that's been downloaded, and I'll cut it from there and put it in my PCGIS tutorial. And I'm going to make a folder for this, which is going to be called Assets for Dobbs Ferry Blend File. And from that as assets, I'm going to paste it in. And then I'm going to open it, uh, or rather unzip it to here. And this is a crappy program, WinZip. Try 7-zip, it's much better. But anyway, what it creates is a model. DAE, I need to create a, a folder for this or I will always get these uh, messed up. So solar panels and then drop, take the model and rename it solar panel.dae. And you need to take that and put it in the folder and then have the model because the model folder, which you don't change the name of, has the texture of the solar panel. So you need both of those in the same folder. Then we go back to our Blender file and let's deselect, but let's um, go to a separate layer. And in this layer, let us import Collada, because we saved it as a Collada file. Let's find the assets and the solar panels, and then click on solarpanel.dae, and it'll pull it in with its texture. And if you hit, okay. If you hit that, uh, the period, you'll zoom in on it. Um, to see the texture, you'd have to go into texture and material. And the reason you're not seeing it is because there's no light source. So if you want to see that in an area, just check stuff out. Add a lamp in here somewhere. And there you go. Now you can see the texture because there is a lamp that I put in. It illuminates it. All right, so we select this. Um, it has more parts to it than that. So the way that you select it, if you select all, you're going to get the lamp as well. So we don't want that. So I'm not going to do select all. I'm using the bounding box and select around it to get everything there. See that point there? That can be a problem. So let's see. The first thing you might do is Control J to try to join the meshes. There you go. Now it's a single mesh. And that mesh now can be duplicated with. Shift D, and the duplicate, I did a couple of them. We can take that duplicate and move it onto our primary layer. And why do we not have a light here? Oh, because we're looking at texture. I didn't put a lamp, by the way, in this layer, so let's go ahead and put a lamp in here. Add a lamp. Now the lamp has been added. 
and you can kind of see it's beginning to make some impact but we should make it the sun and now the sun's super bright way too bright and we want to bring the energy of the sun down and there it is under solid okay so now there is the Greenberg Hebrew Center and we can zoom in by hitting the uh, period key on the numbered pad and now where is our solar panel? Where is our solar panel? It wasn't even named. Let's see. In here, there's a solar panel. That's the lamp. Solar panels here. There's the solar panel. And with that solar panel, we can move it. We have to name it actually. So let's go to view, show active, and rename this solar panel two. There's also a solar panel here. That one would be renamed solar panel one. And then there's another solar panel here that we already moved into, which would be solar panel three. And if we go back to here, we should be able to find solar panel three. Solar panel three. And it's exceedingly small. So we need to scale it by hitting S. Scale it up so we can see it. And then hit G and move it over to the Greenberg Nature Center and hit 7 so we can find it in the orthographic view and put it over the center and then zoom in there and then move it down and then we're going to have to shrink it because it's way too big in this case it has a texture or should have a texture Not a material, it has a material, not a texture, okay. Um, but it's so, so, so big. And when you go up to the properties, we scaled it, and it should be scaled at 0.1 perhaps. Hit enter, 0.1, and 0.1. There, that's more like it. All right. 